All right, welcome back. And before we get started, I want to just show you a couple of things that I've added to the plugin to the Visual Studio Code Love 2D plugin, of which you can get in the um, store, the Visual Studio Code store, or you can just click on this little guy right here and you can type in Love 2D right here. And this will be one of the plugins that shows up. I've added a couple of things to it. And that is uh, a couple of a one quick key to toggle show in the debug console on Love Execution, and this is the default. And this is a nice little way that if you want to change that default, you can just paste this into your key settings. But I, if you'll notice, check down here on the console. If I hit Control Shift and L, it will say, "Hey, debug mode is enabled." And now when I run our program, you see my little console window comes up. So that's a, a quicker way to change that stuff. Uh, than to do it the way I was doing it. So I'm going to just turn that off right now because I don't need it. But the more exciting one is uh, run on save. That's right. I've added the ability to tell Visual Studio to run Love 2D on the folder, your project folder, anytime you save a file. And you can turn that one on. Um, I'll just turn that on real quick because you can see I've turned it on. And then we're going to go and do a few things. So so uh, really cool stuff, and uh, that's one of the reasons also why I moved the, uh, I'll, do, I'll show you right now. I'll just take that out and I'll save it, and it will rerun. And as you can see, I've moved the window over some. Matter of fact, let's move it over a little bit more. Let's go to 1200 and see what that does. So all I did was just save it. Perfect. So I'm going to leave it like that, and that's why I moved the window over, because um, normally we'll have like the Love 2D API open over here. Um, so anyway, and actually let's move him down a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we were messing around, well, we have messed around with key presses a little bit, but let's get a little bit more sophisticated than this because at some point we may want to tie key presses to some kind of more generic sort of thing like a fire button or like a jump button, and we may just want to say jump or fire, and we may want to remap that to if the player has a joystick or if it has if the player has a keyboard. Um, so let's make a class so that we can use it basically in, uh, in the update loop. So that when it's when update is called, we can check we can check three things. We'll be able to check whether the key uh, was pressed on that frame, which can be important. Whether it was released on that frame, or if it or the state the current state of it. Period. So we can tell if the key is being held down or whatever. And for that, I want to create a new file, and we'll call it keyboard keyboard Lua. I will call it keyboard because that's a logical a logical choice. And we'll make a local table, and we'll call that table keyboard, and we will return that table. And now we need uh, we need a few things. We're going to need uh, to have a method to call or a function to call, uh, so that we can update our state. And we'll just call that update like that. And in this, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're going to do some clearing of a table. I, I, I'll show you what I mean. We need here, we need a, we'll call it a dictionary. That's, kind of, that's pretty much what it is. It'll be a dictionary that contains, containing keys that um, have been pressed um, for the current frame. We'll just call it that for the current frame. So we'll call that, and that's a local. And notice uh, where I'm not using the class. Uh, I don't think that we really need the class functionality for this, but we can always change it and uh, easily uh, make it a class later using that class module. But for now, we I don't think we need that. So let's make a table and we'll call it if I can spell, not case states, we'll call it key states, empty table. And we want to also have a function that we will, whenever we, uh, whenever uh, we go into, when we get into love.load, we'll want to hook some love events with uh, this keyboard module. And the keyboard module, at, at least the way that we're going to design it, um, 
is going to be the only module for now that hooks these events because you know once you redefine this it's kind of it, it, only one thing can respond to these so we're gonna we're gonna hook love dot uh, key pressed and notice it gives you the key that was pressed and then the scan code and then whether it's uh, I believe that's is repeat I think that means is it has it is it has it been repeating or the repeating I'm, anyway in my testing I've figured I don't I'm pretty sure I don't need to mess with that. And what all we're going to do here is we're just going to say key states, our little key states table up there. We're going to use key as the key for the table. And since it's been pressed, we're going to make it true. That's it. That's all we're going to do. And then on function, love.keypressed. Here it is. No, not key pressed. Sorry. Key released. We're going to do the same except we're going to say false. So what's nice about this table, and I just saved it, you can see that it just re-ran re it, um, which is awesome. And we can actually, like I said, we can turn that on, we can turn it off. I'm going to turn it off for now. What's nice about this, putting this in a table, especially with Lua, is we can we actually have three states because here we're setting the state of this key to true. Here we're setting the state of this key to false. We can also set the key to nil, which means it's just undefined. So we really have three states, and that's going to be great for us because we're going to actually use that. Um, we want to make this, we want to clear this key states um, table or dictionary. Let's just call it a table. Makes it nicer. So we want to we want to clear this every time we update because remember we want it we want to know if the key has been pressed or released in the same frame. So to do that, we'll do a uh, for key comma value uh, in pairs uh, key states. So we're going to go through all of the currently defined keys in the key states table and what we're going to do is we're just going to say key states of key equals nil so basically we're delete we're just removing it from the table and that so that's basically our third state which is nothing's happened this frame or you know it's clearing it's clearing the states out of the out of of our table for the given frame you'll kind of see how it works here in a minute okay so we've got our hook love events and let's go ahead we're not done yet but let's go ahead and let's require that over here in main and then let's did I do capital I guess yeah I did do capital do key and then let's say hook love events yep and this will become not needed anymore um, and also we can actually take this stuff out too because we don't we don't use that anymore that's from some old stuff so we'll get rid of that clean things up a bit all right so we've hooked in our love events here now we need a way to query this table and ask it you know is the key been pressed what's the current state of the key has it been released on this frame or not so let's start with the obvious one which is um, We'll just call it key, and then we'll ask for a key. And for this, basically, we're gonna we're asking for the current state of the key. Doesn't matter has it been pressed this frame or whatever. It's gonna give us the current state of the key. So if it's being held down, it will be this will be always return true. Or if it's let if it's not being pressed, it will return false. And love has its own function for this, which we're just basically wrapping. Um, it's love dot keyboard dot uh, is down. And hmm, surprise, it's exactly right. Okay, so that gives us, that returns the current state of the given key. Call it that, of the given key. Okay, current state. And we also, like we said, we want a function that returns if the key has been, just has been, no, has been pressed this frame. And then we also want, a function 
if the key has been uh, we'll call <laughs> we'll call it unpressed this frame. So we got two functions that we're going to do here. Function keyboard will say key down. That's going to basically we're going to ask is the key been pressed this frame? And that's a nice way to to get it with our update function and we want to so basically we're kind of moving away from the event based and we want to we want to control when we when we ask for this kind of stuff in the update function. We'll see how this works out later, you know, it it might change, it might not. We'll I, I'm, I think that this will work nicely actually. So here all we have to do is we return key states of key. And if that's nil, it it will return false. If it's true, it will return true. If it's if it's actually defined and it's false, it'll return false. So that's what we want. Here, what we want, we want to know if the key has just been released. Well, we can do that too, but we have, we have to say key equal. Remember, if it's nil, then the key hasn't just been pressed. The habit hasn't just been released. If it's true, it's just been pressed, not just released. So we want to know if that key states of key is equal to false. Um, and I think, you know, that's a good, that's a good point. Does, does nil equal false in Lua? Let me check. We bring our old trusty little command line over here and we'll We'll uh, cd, it doesn't really matter, does it? And let's go into Lua, and let's say, um, can I say return nil equals false? Can I, will that work? And it's false, and that's exactly what we want. Nil does not equal false, that does make sense. Okay, good, this will work just fine. So if the key has just been um, let up for this, in this frame, in this update frame, then it will return true. But if it hasn't, it'll return false. And I think, I think we're done because we cleared it here. Okay, yeah, I think we're ready to test this out. So let's go down here and let's go ahead and stick the update function right here for, the, for our little key module. Um, and I guess maybe we should add a little blurb of text up here. This module keeps track of keys pressed and released. And can return and yeah, just this module keeps track of keys pressed and released. That's good enough. Okay, let's uh, let's run it real quick. Make sure there's no errors, and there are errors. Keyboard thirty-five, thirty-five. Oh, double, double function, and that should be all the errors. Yep. Okay, let me turn on um, run on save. So I've enabled run on save, so we'll see it appear over here. And uh, let's go back to one, so that we can see what's going on here. Let's close this so we get more lot more room now let's grab some of this stuff and bring it up here so now we're going to check in the update loop so if key dot what did we call it key is that right yeah we'll just leave it at that i'm, I'm just thinking maybe we should change that but for now i think it's fine Key space, so if key space is, is down, actually we want it pressed. If it was pressed to this frame, or key down, oh it was key down. Key down this frame. And the current animation is not punch, then we do all this good stuff. We're just going to it up here uncomment it and we'll go ahead and do end 
and I just yeah saved it. So now, yeah. And notice I'm going to hold down the space bar, and you see it knows that the key. So it's properly clearing that key during this update cycle. So only when I press it does it do that. So then if I we wanted to just do it every time after it comes out of the punch animation, we could do this. So now we're just asking the current state of the key. So now if I hold it down, you see, it's going to just keep punching. But we want key down here. Um, something else let's do real quick uh, because it'll be nice with this um, save and load kind of thing because when I save it, the uh, the focus automatically goes to this window. So let's add an exit key also. So we'll say else if key key down escape. So we'll press the escape key. Then we'll say love dot event dot quit. That's what we want to do is just quit. So watch. I'll save that. Comes up and I can hit escape. It quits and then it returns me to this focus. So that's great. I like that a lot. Like it a lot. This other stuff we don't really need right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And now we have our keyboard um, input module ready to go. Well, it works. It's working. <clears throat> oh, and that was one thing we didn't we didn't test. We can also test that one, which is key up. So here he comes, and I'll press down spacebar. Okay, so I've got it pressed, and I'm going to let it up. And then he print punches once. So that works also. So that's great. We got that all working. And then I'm gonna now I'm just gonna disable that run on save. So I think that's a great place to stop. Um the keyboard module is really simple. What we we will probably eventually do is we will probably abstract that away into some sort of input module such that we can um, we'll add like a joystick module and do something similar like what we did here with the keyboard but then we'll have a joystick too and then we'll have some sort of input module that will take strings like jump or fire or left or right and then it will translate it to and from these these key states so um, and we'll offer events on that I don't know. We'll see how how this works out. I guess for now we'll just I don't know. We'll keep it like this. But anyway, um, I think that's good for now. So this one is actually this one episode is just about this one thing, which is the, the keyboard and how to kind of do the keyboard states. And with that, I will see you next time. <laughs>